stop motion animation. So this is in partnership with the Act for Change Fund. And it's this great fund in the UK, which is giving opportunities to young people all over. And today we are very pleased to be able to partner with them. We're an organization called Divergent Thinking, and essentially we're a youth led social action project, which aims to teach young people from all backgrounds how to think in different and creative ways. Give you a little bit of background about who I am. Here's a picture of me in a suit. So I'm Nat, I'm the co-founder. I love animation. I have always been fascinated as someone who is heavily dyslexic i really struggle to communicate via writing so i'd always find interesting and inventive ways to tell my story i've done like i remember doing little lego stop motions and my lego moving around i've had apples eating themselves i've had me kind of like jumping up and flapping like a chicken going like around the place cut out animations like they do in self part as well as doing a lot of animation i've also worked in the tv industry creating visual effects i run a youtube channel around different ways of thinking so there's a little brief introduction of myself it's always interesting to hear about your stories and your experiences what can you expect from today well first of all we're going to learn the fundamentals of creating a digital animation it's really important to know this is only an hour. We can't actually make an animation in such a short amount of time. But what I can do is give you all the tools needed. So the second this finishes, you can go off into the wild and make one today. It really is going to be that simple. Then we're going to learn what makes a good stop motion. Making a stop motion is easy, but making a good one can take a little bit of practice. So we'll definitely be going into that. How to make smooth motion, how to maximize your phone to your fullest. Your phone's actually pretty powerful, but a lot of people do not take full advantage of it. So let's start off with something real basic. What is your favourite animations? If it's not on this list, please put it in the chat, because I could only fit so many on one page. For me, I don't know, maybe I'm a bit biased because I've watched it recently, but I, I love Space Jam, which, you know, is a, is a hybrid between stop that. I don't know, have any of you seen the newest Space Jam? Transformers? Oh nice, what the classic cartoon versions. I love the Batman animations, they're really good. It's really hard to say. Hero 6, Kieran? Oh, Kiro, uh, love it. Coco? Yes, Coco is beautiful. Kung Fu Panda? Love it. Who doesn't love Jack Black? What if I love them all? <laughs> yeah, who knows? <laughs> all of them, why not? Scooby-Doo? Brilliant. I love the classic Scooby-Doo's. Spirited Away. Well, Spirited Away by Studio Ghibli's um, are perfect. Coraline. Ne yes, Laura. And on the board, we've got Toy Story 2. A great one. I love Toy Story 3. I don't think Toy Story 4 was needed, in my opinion. Ratatouille. Ratatouille is so, so beautiful. They really capture France amazingly. Monsters Inc. I like that. If any, whoever um selected Monsters Inc. Have you been watching Monsters at Work on Disney Plus? It's actually really good. I I'm enjoying it. Uh, oh, we've got Brave, Nice, Ice Age, and Tom and Jerry. I do love Tom and Jerry. Uh, we've got Big Hero Six. Oh, we got Tangled. I'm a big fan of Tangled. I actually prefer the story of Tangled, but the music of Frozen. Shrek, of course. Pocahontas, Ice Age um Mulan I like the animation Mulan I didn't really like the live action one uh nice Beauty and the Beast wow okay so we've got a very broad range of everything Wally Wally for me the first half of Wally is is perfect I, I wouldn't change it for anything the second half not so much but that's up it's up to you oh and we've also got Up Up is classic again the very beginning of the film gets me every time and we might even be revisiting up later, so glad you said. So knowing that, we're all into animation, right? We love it. But how do you make it? Now, <laughs> animation is a really, you know, it's very tricky, but you've got to get started somewhere. So apart from just your traditional, like, hand-drawn animation or computer animation, which a lot of you have said you liked, have you heard of any of the following? So we've got a whiteboard animation, where you kind of, like, draw stop motion where things are like you know moving like that in real life cut out animation a bit like self park at the beginning um but when you have like cut outs and they like move along or flip book animations and, go, and then you see something like a ball bouncing i've tried them all before most failed well thankfully i'll give you some tips on how to make them a success 
Whiteboard animation is really great for explaining videos. This is when you just put a camera over a whiteboard and you start drawing. The tough thing is the reflections. Um, but when you get that, it's pretty good. Stop motion is literally just, um, I don't have anything. Okay, here's a hairbrush. You have an object and it's moving on its own. It could be like something like Wallace and Gromit. Then you've got cut out animation, which essentially is a drawing, which you've cut out and it can move along. And a flip book is lots, it's like a physical book. You do not need a monitor to watch it. And all of these you can make at home. Now, if you do have your phone available, I recommend getting this downloaded now. We aren't going to use it um in the workshop but we i am going to be referring to it and showing you like what different things mean so it could be a nice thing to follow along with on your app or play store you can get stop motion studio so it's on iphone and android it's both free you can pay for extras but you really don't need to it's a nice free event okay we've got i tried stop uh, motion in primary school nice good time to revisit and if you aren't able to download it really really not a problem just do it at the end of the workshop there are many apps that you can use you don't even need an app but i find this app is really simple easy to use and i've been using it for years so i can i can recommend it oh yeah we've got i have already have it and it's really good perfect nice it's much better coming from you than it is from me. So I'm going to move on now because I know it might take a bit of time downloading on your phone. Uh, but when you have downloaded it, if you're able to, all you need to do is just like have a look at it while I'm talking because hopefully you'll start to like understand. But if not, you can just view this back later. So first of all, I'm going to start off with a few examples. I mentioned a whiteboard animation. You, I don't know if any of you have heard of Draw My Life videos. These are where people start telling about their life. I'm going to play a little bit of it. Um, if you can't hear it, don't worry, but it's more about the visuals. What up everyone, it's your girl, Super. And over the past few weeks, a top comment on almost all of my videos has been, Do a Draw My Life video. And I'm here to tell you that I've already done one. Say, shma. Yep, I've done it. But you can't see it because I deleted it the very next day. Why, you ask? Well, because it included stories about my life that involved other people. And honestly, it broke my heart to delete. So I'm going to talk over this a little bit now. And yes, I'm glad that you've heard of Lily before. So if you notice, this is kind it is animation. But if you look, it's not actually moving on its own. She's just drawing it and rubbing it out and doing lots of cuts. But this is a really simple way to get started. It can be on a whiteboard. It can be on paper. It could be with chalk, any kind of drawing material. And this is a chance for you to kind of tell your story or do really basic animation you can get creative though and you can like draw a little stick man rub out the arm and move it ever so slightly so it looks like they're moving around so this is definitely something i want you to consider for when we're doing animation today there's so many different ways you can do it and if one doesn't work for you try another one for me i liked whiteboard animation but i did find it very difficult because you do have to get the camera directly over it otherwise it's all very shiny but once you get that sorted with good lighting which we are going to speak about later, it's so, so much easier. Another example is stop motion. So I know most of you have heard this. One of my favorite stop motioners of all time is a design, is a creator called Pez and really would recommend look checking these out. So as you can see, it's using things that you'd find in your bakery section or little toys and replicating classic games. We had Space Invaders, we've got Froggers now, and you can literally use anything in your house to create a stop motion. The kind of crazier and wackier it is, the more interesting. And this is really interesting, really easy. You literally just have your camera in one place, and you move things ever so slightly, move it, take a picture, move it, take a picture, move it, take a picture. And the, the slower you do it, the better it will come out. Look how smooth this animation is. It's just really smooth. Re there's a really good animation called Alice, which is based on Alice in Wonderland. I love that one. It's all, all stop motion. You've also got things like Wallace and Gromit, Shaun the Sheep, Chicken Run. So these are just a few ideas to get you thinking about what you might want to do later. Now to create something like this, 
you know, like I said, it's not difficult, but there are a few simple rules that if you follow, it will make a massive difference. And if you haven't followed these rules before and it didn't work out, well, try again, because I promise you it will come out so much better. Yes, I like that. Hit that heart button if you're enjoying it. So here are the pro tips. First of all, frames per second. Yeah, we're getting a little bit technical. We're diving in deep. Frames per second. So I think we've got to ask ourselves, what is video? Well, video is just moving images. Animation, like real things moving, is impossible. We can't do it. It's an illusion. So what it is, it's like a photograph and then another photograph. But that next photograph is just a tiny little bit different. And if you play it fast enough, it looks like it's moving. So you can see here, we've got a boat. This boat is slightly different to that one. That one is slightly different to that one. And on their own, they're not animation. But when you play it really fast, <laughs> amazing. Originally animation, um, they started with a thing called a zoetrope, and it was like this big circular thing, and a classic one with a horse, and as you spin it, the horse looks like it's galloping. So you can actually make them at home, it's called a zoetrope, if you ever feel like a creative project for the day. And it's how you can make your own animation without a computer or a screen. So frames per second, essentially lots of photographs. The more photographs you have, the smoother your image. So now you know that, how many frames per second do you think that most TV shows have? Remember, this isn't just for animation. This is even for, you know, watching dramas or like documentaries. All video, animation or live action has frames per second. As you can see here, the less frames they have, the slower they move, or like the more jittery. And the more frames they have, the faster they move. So we've got 30, we've got 60, okay, 25, got one for that. Now, this is quite a difficult question to answer because it used to be that all TV, in the UK at least, was about 25. And that's like the standard, you know, before we had HD, um, high definition. In the US, you know, it was more common to get 30 frames per second. So when you're watching normal TV in the UK, it's probably 25. However, when you're watching things like Netflix or like things on Blu-ray, it is going to be 60. And that just means it's a lot smoother, but it does mean it's a lot more photographs. So rather than like 25 photos every second, remember like one, two, three, four, 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 four you've got to cram 60 in. So it's, if you've got the right camera, it's not difficult at all. But if you're doing animation, do you really want to be drawing or moving things 60 times for just one second of uh, video? Not really, not really. So you've got to ask yourself, okay, we're not gonna do 60 frames. That is too much. 30 frames, too much. And also not really necessary. Our eyes, they like getting tricked, honestly, you can do about 12 to 15 frames when you're starting off with animation. Obviously, the more you do, the better. I aim for about 15 because it's still smooth enough to trick your eyes into motion. Cody says, if you have a lot of free frames, 60, but if you don't, then try 30. Yeah, I think that's totally right. Just try and experiment. But I promise you, you need patience of a saint to get really good at stop motion and animation. Uh, so try not try to start off with like 15 to begin with and then work your way up to 25 or 30. You honestly do not need to go up to 60 for animation. Your eyes just aren't going to realize it. And I guarantee you your favorite Disney movies all have about 25 or 30. And they're like, you know, state of the art professional. This will be important for today because some people animations look really not great because it's like you know they're very jittery and that's just because they do not have enough pictures per second now focus focus is an often look often overlooked thing when it comes to animation and as you can see i'm going to be showing stop motion studio images throughout the presentation so if you have been able to download it hopefully you can kind of follow along but that's completely optional. Focus is, I mean, it'd be good if any of you can explain it to me in the chat. What do we mean for focus, particularly when it comes to animation? Because it's not something we often think about. This applies more. Well, actually, it does apply to all of them, but mostly stop motion. Okay, it's a camera focus, so it's not blurry. When a certain part of the image is clearer than the other, blurred out or shapes. 
blur different. Yeah, all of you are spot on. When we take a picture, the camera is kind of choosing what it thinks is important. And if you've got it on autofocus, which a lot of cameras do, sometimes your image can be blurry. And if you're taking loads of pictures bit by bit and you go back and look at it and it's blurry, you're going to be very upset because you cannot fix that. You have to start again. So on your phone, you it's better to do or when it comes to like the manual settings to go on to manual. I would think manual is the best because manual allows you to keep the same lighting the same throughout and the focused. If it's on auto, it will continuously change and it's going to look all over the place. So I know auto seems the easiest option, but for best results, always go manual. We've got clarity of image, even if it makes it arty and blurred. Yeah, sometimes you need to choose what effect you want. The more control you have, the better generally. But if you are just starting off and you're just practicing, then I suppose auto is fine. But it's really important to know that playing with the settings before you start the whole process is really important. So here's an example of focus. So for instance, at the moment, the shoe starts all blurry. And then when you tap on it, normally on your phone, you like hold it for a second um, and then it will say like AFE lock or it will be just like a square or circle. And you're telling your phone, all right, phone, this is what I want you to focus on. And every now and then is really worth just tapping it and say, and just making sure that it's in focus. I promise you there, may, there will be a time when you spend hours doing a stop motion just to find out the image is not clear and it hurts. But you do not make that mistake a second time. Animation is a time consuming process. So you want to make sure that it's as good as it possibly can be. Next, lighting. Lighting is arguably the, one of the most important things of animation. It can make or break a good image. Lighting is always changing and moving. But on the phone, you can actually change the exposure. So exposure is a word that you might have heard of before. It's essentially you've got your camera. It's about how much light the camera lets in. And the more light the longer the exposure, so it might be a bit like washed out, the less light, it might be too dark. So the good thing on these, you can normally adjust it, but say if like, okay, you move your little adjuster to like, okay, two, three plus, you wanna make a note of it for next time. So you have a consistent exposure. This is how you can kind of manipulate the camp that your phone in order to get good lighting. But we also know that we can just use light around us. So I'm going to ask all of you now, what is the best type of lighting for animation? This answer, you know, maybe you, it could be indoor, it could be outdoor, it could be a light, it could be a box, it could be the sun, you know, whatever one you think would be the best type of lighting for an animation. Odia says like the one on movie sets. Yeah, no, that's cool. Uh, Laura says natural daylight. Uh, Jesse thinks it's a light box. Martin thinks an LED, a light emitting diode. We've got S says a lamp. Free light. Oh yeah, free light boxes. I think a light bulb, natural light or light ring. Interesting answers. And I tell you what, if any of you have ever attended my vlogging or filmmaking workshops, you'll know I always say natural light is the best for when it comes to filming, just because it lights your whole face up, you look beautiful and it's free and cheap. However, when it comes to animation, natural light is not good at all. And, and if you think about it, it makes sense because the sun is continuously moving around the planet. Um, hence why it's nighttime for some of you and daytime for the rest of us. And as animation takes a very long time, you want your light to be very, very consistent. So, oh, in graphics, we use desk lamps. Yes. Here is an example of an animation, a stop motion with natural light. As you can see, the, can you see the shadows, like the light is moving all over the place? And maybe that's like the aesthetic look you're going for, but typically it's not great. And this is because, say like this animation probably took an hour or so, even though it's very small. In this short time, the sun's already moved around. And if you're doing a really long animation, you are not going to be able to do it in an hour before the sun changes. So this is an example of pro lighting. And look how much more professional it looks. It, you know, it's very clear. The lighting is consistent. It looks very polished. So I guess you're thinking, all right, brilliant, Nat. This makes a lot of sense. 
but how can I get this type of lighting? I'm on a bit of a budget. Well, thankfully, there's lots of things you can do. Here is an image, and yep, just like one of you mentioned, a desk lamp. So as you can see here, we've got a light at the back. And one of you did actually mention three point lighting, a light on the side and a light on the other side. Now, these are just desk lamps. They're nothing special. Uh, if you ever notice, you know, the Pixar um, opening where you've got the little lampshade again and it jumps on a ball. It's because, you know, lights are essential to animation. But if you might also see, they've got this kind of box around it. And it's kind of like just using like uh, film or paper that's slightly transparent. And that's because if you have a really bright light, it's just going to look like bleach out everything and you're not going to be able to see. So having like a bit of fabric or a cloth or paper helps absorb some of the light and space it out. So the best type of lighting you can get is three point lighting, a light all around it. and that is the best option. You really can do this with just what you have at home. You do not need to go out and buy anything extra. Top tip though, you know like different lights have different colours. So you've got either like yellow bulbs or white light. White light is the best one and it's definitely better to have the same coloured lights. So if you have one bulb that's yellow and one bulb that's white, it's not going to look so great. So just kind of keep that in mind. All right, we're doing well. Really useful. You're welcome, Cass. Next for voiceover, What's great about animation, because I teach a lot of filmmaking, and one of the biggest things I realise is that a lot of people hate being on camera, and you know, are understandable. So animation is a really great alternative where you can still be creative, still express yourself, but you don't have to show your face. But it doesn't mean that you still can't use your voice. You know, I, some, there's some really great voiceover artists, so you can kind of practice, but sound, I know I said lighting is the most important, but sound really is important too. Sound brings everything to life. Sound makes it seem like real and it, as the frames per second tricks our brain into thinking it's movement, sound tricks our brain even more to think it's happening in real time. But unfortunately, the sound quality on your mobile phone isn't great and it's going to make it seem a little bit unprofessional, though there are certain things you can do to make it as pro as possible. Cody says, I use voice changes to make robotic voices. Yes, you can absolutely put effects on your voice, like, hello, welcome to the robots. Or, you know, you can do like funny accents. <laughs> you can do so many different things. How can we get better sound quality? We're only using our mobile phone here. What can we do to make sure the quality is as good as possible? Okay, we've got a headphone mic, absolutely. Be somewhere quiet, penguin. Yes, that's one of the really great things you can do. Just make sure you're in a quiet space. Microphone, no background noise, good microphone. Make sure there's no background around. Uh, stopper. Yes, I um. Oh, on my mic, I've got this fluffy little thing here, which helps with sound quality. And that's because uh, when sound hits it, it kind of absorbs. Record in your wardrobe. Do you know what, Cass? That's not a bad idea. You know, because you're not in your wardrobe for long. <laughs> no background noise and put your cup in a cup or bowl. Yes, you can kind of like do that to amplify it. Speak closer to the mic. Have a microphone also. I've got a little, I've got a little microphone here. You, you know, obviously a microphone, a professional one is the best option, but they're not the cheapest. So what you can do is got your little headphones and you can just speak into it. But the best advice you can get is just have a quiet room, you know, shut the windows, turn any fans off, ask, you know, your family to be quiet for a few minutes. If it, And these things will make the biggest difference. Another thing is if you've got a lot of echo, echo in your room, that's not great. So what you can do is get like a blanket or a towel and just kind of like put it like over the door and something. And what that does is the sound kind of like hits it and rather than bounces back into your phone, it kind of kind of like it absorbs. So these are just some things you can do to get better audio. Also, take your time. You know, I do it like multiple, multiple takes until I'm absolutely happy with it. OK, great. We've done that. Now on for framing. We mentioned about consistency of light. Consistency is so important no matter what we're um we're doing in animation so what we mean by framing is just keeping your phone nice and still if your phone is still and something is like you're moving it around perfect but if your phone's moving around 
It doesn't matter how slow you move your object, it's going to look terrible. So this is why on the app and in other apps, there's some really good tips and tools which can make your life a lot easier. Kieran says tripod. Yes, get a tripod. A tripod is just a thing with like three sticks um, and you can get them on Amazon really cheap for like five pounds, five dollars ish. Um, they make a huge difference. If you do not have one, that's fine, but there are things that you need to do in order to do the best job possible. First of all, framing grid. So we've all seen it when you kind of put the grid on your phone and it's normally like little boxes. This allows you to line things up and to remember exactly where you put it. Another thing I use is sellotape. So say if I've got a tripod or I've balanced my phone somewhere, I'll just put some sellotape around it so I remember exactly where the position was. And the next thing is an onion skin. What is an onion skin, I hear you say? Well, an onion skin, if you think about it, is kind of see-through. So what it does is you can, on here, do the opacity. You can show the last image you took, um, like kind of see-through. So you can line up your last image with your current image. So say you've got a last tea time and you've got a run off, but you've not finished your animation. You can come back later and rather than try to remember exactly where your camera was, you can line them up with the onion skin. This is a really good feature, which is, you know, I use it every time I do animation. I'm not promoting just one app, but like I said, Stop Motion Studio tends to be a really good choice if you're not sure where to start. Well, now we're going to look on a bit on the grid one. The grid is not just useful for making sure you do not move your camera, but it's also useful to make sure you have a really interesting image. I'm not sure if any of you have ever heard of Rule of Thirds or the Golden Section, but essentially it means that where you put your camera, you can make it more interesting. So if you have like, you know, not have your character, like your Lego man, slap bang in the middle, but have it like slightly to the left or slightly to the right, it could just make it a bit more interesting. So on here on this image, you can see they've got the grid here and it just gives like really good framing. You see these two characters aren't exactly in the middle because normally you have your like your foreground, your midground, your background. And all of these things are really important to make the image visually interesting. OK, nice. Yes, we've got some there. Someone put it on him. I would say my eye does go to the Lego man walking. And if you noticed, he is slightly to the left, not to the right. OK, nice. So actually, we've got quite a diverse. Most of you are saying around there, and that's right. So try and think how you want it to look. Make sure you get the camera level, eye level. It can be difficult to get the camera in a good position. That's why a tripod is useful. But do take your time to pick a good location. Do any of you have any tips or tricks about how you can keep your phone still? Maybe you're animating a, a pen that moves along or on any objects. How do you keep your objects standing up? Because the best thing about stop motion is that you can move things which cannot move in real life. But that does mean that it can be quite difficult to make things stand up. First of all, tripod. Nice. You can get a big tripod or you can get one that are like called gorilla tripods, which are just really small ones that can like wrap around trees. There are a few other options. OK, a phone stand. Yes, just get a phone stand that, you know, those little kind of locks on. Keep the phone on a stand and maybe blue tack. Yes, I was hoping one of you would come up with that idea. Blue tack is one of your best friends when it comes to stop motion. I use it all the time. It allows things to look like they're moving, standing up on their own. Keep your elbows close to your body so you don't shake. Yes, you can do that because sometimes, though I said it is great to keep steady, you might want to start getting really fancy and doing like photo, 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 photo. So you can kind of see like a panning effect, a base behind it. Yes, some books, some blue tack elbows, um, essentially anything which is going to stay still. And if you take a break, you can come back and it's going to be exactly where you left it. Double sided tape. Yes, that is a really good one. I use that a lot because sometimes blue tack is you is visible and you might not want it visible. Rips, strings, box, stands, Lego. Lego is a amazing for stop motion just because it's so you can do so much with it. OK, here's some top tips. These are the main things we, we covered. So first of all, do not alter your lighting. Lighting needs to stay the same. This is why the sun is not a great option. Get a little desktop light. Three is ideal. Two's OK. One, if you have nothing else. Next, do not bump the camera. 
you know, you might not think, if you just knock the camera slightly, you might think, ah, it's not a big deal. But when you watch your footage back, you're going to notice that bump. Best practice is if you can get like a little remote for your phone and you can do like the clicker for a photo rather than actually touching your screen. Because every time you touch your phone, you're slightly moving it, then it doesn't look so great. If you're not able to do that though, it, it, it's fine. But just be really careful. Just do really light touches on the clicker button to avoid moving your phone. Next one is do not change the camera settings once you've started. Make sure all the settings and playing around is done beforehand. Otherwise, you're going to see a really big difference. Like your image will be like light and then it will go dark straight away. It will be blurry and then sharp. Preparation is so vital when it comes to animation. Now for a couple of do's. Do try to complete each scene without interruption. I always think if I know something's going to take me an hour, I make sure I have that hour free. Um, because like each scene, you kind of want to do all in one go. Otherwise, too many things can change. Things can move around. So try and do it all in one go. Nice. Someone's smashing that love button. Next, do shoot test frames. Do not just think, OK, I've got my tripod. I've got my camera ready. I'm just going to go for it. Do some testing. It takes like only like 10 minutes or so just to do a little practice one and view it back on your phone to make sure you are happy with it. Next, or well, the last one, do take more photos than you think you need. With animation, you can like, it's really easy to get rid of ones. Like if you ever got a bad photo, you can just delete it nice and easy, but you can't go back and add new, old new ones because it just isn't going to look right. So remember, all of these things are so important. So if you've ever tried animation before and it's not worked out great, follow these rules here and you will notice a difference. All right, planning. We've talked about actually doing the animation, but a lot of people think, well, I have no idea what I'm going to even do an animation on. This is when planning really comes in. I want you to think about when you're looking at what you can animate, just look around you and if you know, and think, what do I have in my room that I could animate? For instance, in my room, I've got a, a bottle. I could have that moving around. I have a donkey. I could have a donkey going around. It can literally be anything, or it could be a pen or a paper clip, a fan, a sock, anything that you could do. We've got headphones moving around. Onions. Who has onions around them? My novels. Yes, I've got a lot of novels. Legos. Transformers. Great. Someone really likes Transformers. Yarn. Nice. Minifigures. Pens. Books. Yeah. Honestly, anything is great to animate sometimes like really random things like you can get your like, little figures moving around you'd have a cup spinning about a knife and fork eating food play-doh play-doh's a fun one stationary carved animals sellotape yes i've done one with a rolling sellotape honestly anything you have around you can be used to make a stop motion kieran said anything is possible with googly eyes and glitter yes Honestly, I love it. Get an apple, stick some googly eyes on it. You've got yourself a character. I did an apple when it like kind of like I took each time I took a little bite, uh, took a bite, took a picture, another bite, took a picture and it looks like it was eating itself. So that was really fun. My novels, nuts, books, toys, really, really good choices. All of these would make great examples. So now we're going to get inspired. <laughs> I don't know if any of you have ever watched Annoying Orange. He uh, is annoying. But it's, I want to show you this video, not because I particularly like Annoying Orange, he's annoying, but more so there's so many different ways of making a quality animation. It doesn't just have to be in one style. Today I'm mainly talking about stop motion, but there's other options. <laughs> You're an apple. <laughs> yeah, you've definitely watched it. Hey apple. Hey. Apple. Hey apple. Hey apple. Apple. Hey. Hey, what? What? What is it? Aren't you glad I didn't say apple again? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that joke yeah. was funny the first 400 times you said it. Hey, apple. What? You look fruity. <laughs> yeah, that, that was hilarious. Hey, hey, apple. What? Can you do 10 push-ups in 10 seconds? The question is that. I don't even have arms. So as you can tell, it's an annoying orange. But what's really interesting here, it's the exact same scene animated in four different styles. I'm just going to quickly go over them. So the first one here is CGI, computer generated imagery. This is by far the hardest one to do because you need to have a lot of base. You need a lot of skills. I would recommend not trying this one out to begin with 
but it's definitely possible. The easiest one, I would say, is stop motion. And when I say easiest, I mean it's easiest to get started. But obviously, if you want to perfect something and make it the best possible, all of these things take practice. And as you can see, this is just little bits of Lego slowly moving around. And they use like little images. Um, Laura says Blender is great for computer animation. Absolutely. But it does take a bit of a learning curve. Then we've got um, 2D animation. This can be drawn by hand or it can be drawn on the computer. Not I think like, like flash animation. And the one here, which is the most standard um, annoying orange, is what they've done. It's called superimposing. So they've taken pictures of real life objects and then they took um, they recorded their face. And what they did on the computer, they kind of cut out their eyes and they stuck it over the top. Re you know, it sounds difficult, but it really isn't as difficult as it sounds. Um, you do this thing called like masking. Again, some of these might sound a bit complicated, but these are definitely things you can practice and try out. I always try just to make like a little like five second animation on all of these types, just to see which one do I prefer the most. The 2D one looks like Tom and Jerry. Yes, I could definitely see that. I've had a go at all of them, to be honest, and... Uh, I find stop motion the most creative, but I also do like the do the soap superimposing one. You know exactly how to make the animation. You know what style you want to do the animation in, but you need a story. Storyboards are really important. Again, if you just get an object and start moving it along, you, it's really difficult to think, okay, actually I've changed my mind now and move it around. Considering animations take so long to make, you want to make sure that you have a good story. Personally, this is why I love, love Studio Ghibli and Pixar, because they know it takes a long time to make an animation. So they make the story as good as possible. Cass says, what makes a CGI one, CGI, if that makes sense? Do they draw it all out of scratch? Good point. So with computers, they'll normally do a storyboard first. So they'll draw it in images. Then they'll put it onto the computer. And then they'll make it kind of like move. Um, and then they will create like models, like 3D images, and then each time they can like tell the arm to move. So stop, I would say CGI takes a lot longer in the beginning to get started, but once you've started, it's a lot easier. So for example, Shrek 2 was probably a lot easier than making Shrek 1, just because they already had the models. But um, what 2D animation? I'm trying to think of a what's a 2D animation that has a sequel. Anyone want to help me on this? Like a Disney movie that has a sequel. Okay, let's say yeah, Pokemon or, or Mulan. What kind of they have sequels? So, for example, their sequel will be just as difficult almost as the original because they've still got to draw them all out, and it's not much quicker. So that's the thing. Some you know longer at the beginning, easier going on, or equally as difficult no matter what you do. Yeah, so there are a lot of sequels on TV, but they're not exactly great. The Hunchback of Notre Dame, yeah, that's another one. Essentially, most Disney movies have a sequel, <laughs> but um, whether or not you watch them is uh, is up to you. Now, here is an example of a storyboard created for CGI, but can anyone name the movie? Yes, Caroline. Up. Yes, it is up. And this shows you, like, eat, no matter what type of animation you do, whether it's stop motion, wherever it's superimposed, whether it's 2D drawn, drawing it out first is really important. And as you can see here, you see they've got the arrows and that tells you like where the motion happens. So you have a really clear idea what you want to happen before you're doing it. It really, I, honestly, I can't stress it enough. Just taking, you know, half an hour. There's an old expression called sharp, sharpen the saw. And this is before you're about to cut down a tree, you want to make sure your blade is nice and sharp. That preparation makes your job so much easier. All right, uh, you, I can see you're all loving up. Who doesn't love up? So that's the main section. We've got our animation now. You've come up with the idea. You've created it and you've done it with each little scene. Now you need to edit it because otherwise there might be bits in it that you do not like. Things might just not work with the story. And yes, you can edit in the apps I mentioned, but to be honest with you, I always edit in another app because other apps can do it better. So have any of you ever done editing 
it doesn't have to be on animation, just any type of digital editing. Maybe you've used something like uh, Final Cut or Premiere Pro if you're being a real professional. Maybe you've used the classic Windows Movie Maker of iMovie. Or you've had a go at mobile video editing, visited editing on Lightworks, Kinmaster, I've done a bit of editing before. Okay, that's just some other ones, nice. The most professional ones are Premiere Pro and Final Cut X. You do not need to use them. They're, they, they, they're for... Well, I mean, you can use them, but they, they take a while to learn. These ones, Movie Maker, they're a bit out of date now, but if you've got iMovie, still great. But honestly, I just use mobile phone editing software. It's just as good. For instance, you've got your animation on Studio, export it, which means when you save it and make it as a file, and open it up or import it into one of these editing platforms, and you're able to cut it. I've done a little editing, mobile phone editing really mainly. Mobile phone editing is honestly can be just as good if you are depending on what you want to do. Now, I'm going to play one of my favorite stop motions. And what I want you to do is count all the edits. So what I mean by edit is when you've got it and it goes to another scene. Because remember, like each animation is like lots of different sections joined together. It isn't just continuous. So try and count every time you can see a different shot slash edit. How many do we have? I may have lost count. <laughs> 13, 14, 16, 14. I lost counts. See, I counted 14, but to be honest with you, I may have lost count. Yeah, yeah. I, I think it was 14, but if any of you think it other, it very well may be. But as you can, like, get from that, and it, yeah, it did look painful. Uh, but what it is, it's lots of different scenes. And just so you all know, like, how, how do they even make this? It's actually really interesting. So... They literally just got his friend, laid him down, stood on top of him, took a picture, and then moved ever so slightly and did it, and did it lots and lots and lots of times. Um, so it's still probably painful, but not as painful as it looks. But you ideally want different shots to make it more interesting. Now, time to upload. You've made your animation, you've edited it, it's looking great, put it on YouTube. Um, but what I will say is do remember the privacy features on YouTube. I always put it like, particularly if you're under 18, it's much better to do it unlisted or private so it's only for you to watch or turn off the comments because nobody likes trolls. But, you know, if you're able to, uh, I think, you know, it's nice to share with people. Just be in mindful of the privacy features, okay? And you're done. There we are. Follow those steps. You've got yourself a nice basic animation. And will it look good to begin with? Maybe not. But keep practicing and it's going to get better and better. Like this little leprechaun, really simple animation, but it's really cute. And if you see how fluid it is, it looks really fluid and it looks more like real life. Okay, what we got here, we've got, I wanted to animate 2D with no idea of what software to use. What do you suggest? Hmm. I would also use Studio Pro, to be honest. You just take lots of pictures or draw pictures, scan it into a computer or get a scanner and scan it multiple times very time consuming but you end up getting the best quality oh enjoyed it thanks now that was great oh i love it really interesting great presenter oh you can come again bye sign up for that nice thank you i used to use flip clip a 2d it's simple but it works yes i've used flipper clip that's good thanks so much nice well i'm really glad you all enjoyed it if you ever want to see what other workshops we've got coming up divergentthinking.uk or there's our email address if you have any questions that you want me to answer that I didn't get time to answer today but I really hope that you enjoyed it and it's been really great having you and oh yeah Cody can I send my stop motion to you for any tips absolutely if any of you do create a stop motion from today and I encourage you go off and make one feel free to send it to admin or nat at divergentthinking.uk and I'll be more than happy to send some tips your way and give you some feedback Ooh, all right, that's a lot. Now I want you all to go and enjoy your weekend or your evening. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Have a nice rest of your day. Uh, my pleasure. You too.